everyone, welcome back to another episode of Little Bumblebear's Let's Play. I'm Chris and Little Bumblebear, and I am back with Jumpstart. This is Jumpstart third grade. I know a lot of you were asking for this one, telling me it was your favorite. I also enjoyed this one when I was a kid. So I'm, I'm excited to be sharing it with you guys. I certainly hope you enjoy. Please give this video a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you want. Tell me your memories of playing this game. And also, if you want, subscribe for more awesome content. Or Jumpstart is coming, so I would recommend it. There will also be a playlist in the description box of the other Jumpstart games I have recorded on the channel thus far. If you want more Jumpstart and more will be added, so keep an eye on it. Also, I have social media you can follow. i got Twitter and Instagram. I stream on Twitch. Catch me live. Follow me on there. Say hi. And I have a Discord server for the community. If you'd like to be a part of it, just let me know in the comments. I'll get you an invite. <laughs> Without further ado, let's begin Jumpstart Third Grade. Thank you for being here. Enjoy. Well, hello. We've been waiting for you. Please sign in. We've got a busy day ahead. If you're new to this school, please use the keyboard to enter your name. Okay, my name is Kristen. Thank you. Please enter and have a seat. Sit up straight. No slouching in this classroom. Is that gum in your mouth? No. Sorry, my mistake. All right. Here we are in the classroom. Ooh. There's my cameo. There's always a bee in every edutainment game I play. I'm in every game. I don't I don't make this up. There I am. I'm always well, that plant was not very nice to me. Sparks had meant for me to fly, he'd have given me wings. But what could I do? This mission is too important. He startled me. I didn't think anyone would be here. Hey, you've got that, uh, the, the, um, transquizzer. Uh, now be careful with that thing. Don't drop it. The future of the world may depend on that little machine in your hands. That is, if I'm not too late. There's just so little time and so much to do. Listen, I need your help. And if you think you can handle it, you can help me save the world. I am Android XL2. But you can call me Botley. That's what Professor Spark calls me. His daughter Polly calls me... Well, never mind what Polly calls me. I'm not getting to the point, am I? Um, here, let me start from the beginning. This morning, Polly's father, he had left for another one of his famous inventor's conventions, and he programmed me to keep an eye on Polly. I'm supposed to keep her out of trouble. With Polly, that's always tough. But today, it was impossible. After coming home from school and madder than I've ever seen her, Polly locked herself in her father's secret chamber. Now... I really shouldn't tell you this because I've been programmed for secrecy. But this being a world emergency and all, well... The professor has an honest-to-goodness time machine up there, and it really works. Not only that, but Polly sent 25 of the other androids back in time. The whole world is changing, and there are changes of Polly written all over them. Cars don't exist anymore, and now everyone has to travel by pogo stick. An orangutan has just been elected president of the United States in a landslide. And the Statue of Liberty is now the Statue of Licorice. It's all happening so quickly. But with your help, I think we can rescue all the androids and maybe stop the world from getting too weird. 
Just hand me the transquizzer. I think it's got all the information we need to get started. Okay, here you go. Cool. Now hang on tight and come with me. Mystery Mountain. What is with this star planet? It's like it wants me to click it. It's going crazy. It's like, click on me! Well, this is it. Home sweet home. Polly should be inside. to be disturbed when I'm working, it breaks my concentration. Okay, let's see what he wants. This might be fun. Oh, it's Notley, you're back. I've been looking for you. My name is Botley. I can see you've brought help. And you've got the Transquizzer. She knows we need it to save the world. Didn't my father teach you it's rude to tell secrets, Rotley? Well, I suppose he's told you his side of everything. <laughs> but what does he know? Today, when I was at school, the teacher handed us a surprise quiz. I already knew all the answers, and she knew I knew them. So, just to have some fun, I made up my own answers to that dumb old quiz. But instead of laughing like she was supposed to, she gave me a big fat zero. I felt faint and short of breath. No one's ever given me a zero before. Well, that's not quite true, Polly. I remember just two weeks ago. Be quiet, Plotly. This is my story. Anyway, after getting my first zero ever, I've got the most brilliant idea. Instead of settling for a bad grade, I changed history to match my answers. So you sent 25 of your father's robots back in time to change history? How could you do that, Polly? Holy Spotly, if you're so scared, why don't you just bring him back yourself? You've got my transquizzer. Now all you need are the questions on my history quiz. To make it so easy even you can figure it out, I'll leave the disc with the first part of the test on the first floor. That's five questions total. Just plug that disc into the transquizzer. Then figuring out where I sent the robots should be simple. Oh, uh, by the way, you have to get in the house first. And I've changed the locks. Good luck. Oh, that's just great. How are we going to get into the mountain? You see, the professor's lock system only opens when you reproduce the chimes you hear. Ring the doorbell to start the chimes. That will start the unlocking mechanism. Welcome to the Jumpstart pager. Check here for special messages. Oh my gosh, I have Jmail! So cool. I'll have to email all of my friends later. Just listen closely and repeat what you've heard by clicking on the correct door panels. You're doing great! Way to go! Way to go! Good job! You opened the lock! Only 
one more lot to go. That's it, you open the door. All right. Now, be quiet and follow me. First, though, let me put this in a safe place. It's the utility belt that Professor Spark designed for me, and it's quite an achievement. Over there's a button that will take you out of any room in the mountain. The indicator next to it tells you how much energy is left to power the mountain. Now, if you ever need assistance, push on this button, and I'll do what I can to help. In the middle of the belt is the inventory. That's where we can store things we find in the mountain. The Transquizzer, for instance. Professor Spark has set up a lot of games inside the mountain for Polly, me, and the other robots. If you click on this button, you can make some of them harder or easier to play. Finally, this score keeps track of how many invention points we earn. By opening the door, you've already earned a few points. Now, our destiny. This is the professor's home and laboratory. It's an entirely self-sufficient environment. We don't have to leave the mountain for anything. The professor even included recreational and cultural activities, so he and Polly wouldn't get bored. Over there is the kitchen, where we feature the very finest robot cuisine. Back there is the art gallery. Through that door is the music hall. When Polly takes her weekly music lesson there, the whole place clears out. Behind that door are stairs leading to the professor's jumbo electro generator. If necessary, we might have to go down there to power up. Finally, that stairway leads to the upper floors, filled with the professor's inventions. His most amazing invention, the time machine, is at the very top. Maybe later we'll have time to explore, but now we have to stop Polly from making the world too weird. To do that, okay. we need to find that quiz disc. Hey, there it is. Pull out the Transquizzer by clicking on the inventory button on the utility belt. All right, it looks like the disc should be inserted in the slot near the top of the Transquizzer. Good morning, Polly. I hope you've studied for the quiz today. You may have a lot of natural ability, but even geniuses need to study. That's Polly's teacher, Ms. Winkle. At that school on the hill, everything's state-of-the-art. All the quizzes are personalized, programmed, and videotaped by the teacher. Pretty cool, huh? Now, today's quiz is all about inventions and discoveries. Something you should know plenty about, Polly. <gasps> but no fair asking your father for help. <laughs> there are 25 questions total, Polly. Five on each of the five discs I've passed out to you and the rest of the class. That's five different levels. So, sit up straight. Put on your thinking cap and select your first question. Okay, what we should do first is select one of the quiz questions. Just click on any one of the five buttons near the bottom of the Transquizzer. Since we've got to bring all the robots back, the order doesn't really matter. The yellow start button will play this question. People once thought the Earth was the center of the universe and everything revolved around it. That's because when they looked up in the sky, the sun and the stars all appeared to be moving around the Earth. A nice idea, but appearances can be deceiving. Today we know that the Earth revolves around what? Miss Winkle, as everybody knows, I am the center of the universe. <laughs> yes, Polly, you're exactly uh. right. The whole world revolves around <laughs> you. <laughs> what? Heavens, Polly is just too much to bear. Oh, she used to think man. she was the center of the universe. Now she really is. We need to go back in time and straighten this mess out, or life as we know it will change drastically. Click on the inventory button to put away the Transquizzer. Well, it just so happened, Sotley, that I realized long ago that you would try to mess up my work. So I covered my tracks by hiding clues all over the mountain. Four clues total. Well, Polly, okay. It looks like we have no choice but to play by your rules, as unfair as they are. Just tell us what we need to find for this mission. Relax, Scutley. It won't be so bad. I sent Russian robot Cosmobot to put me in the center of the universe. 
You can get them back if you find these four clues. A pig, a sundial, a postage stamp, and a dollar bill. But why mess up a good thing? Cosmobot and I never used to get along, but now we're pals. I can't believe Polly reprogrammed him for her selfish purposes. We have to find those clues and get Cosmobot back. Stand back now while I sense the place out. Bingo! I've sensed a mission clue in the kitchen. Voila! Another mission clue is hidden in the music hall. Alright, let's go to the kitchen. This is the door to the kitchen. Everyone eats here. Polly, her dad, and of course, all us robots. The professor put a lock on it months ago because some of the robots were getting a little gluttonous. I mean, they eat all the time if they could. I used to know the combination, but it looks like Polly's changed this lock. You can figure out the combination if you can figure out the math problems that appear on the door. That's Mort peeking out from inside. He's one of the nicer robots around here, but he gets a little cranky when he hasn't eaten. Thank goodness you're here. My stomach's rumbling, and I don't know how to cook. Click on the arrows on the tiles at the bottom of the equation. The up arrows will increase the number. The down arrows will decrease it. When you think you've got the correct number in the tile, click the glowing enter button beneath it. If you want, you can also enter numbers using your keyboard. Then press enter. Uh-uh, try again. Uh, I don't think that number's, uh-uh, try again. There we go. You got the first lock. Two more to go. All right, you got two locks. Just one more. couldn't keep us out. This is Professor Sparks' kitchen, but I doubt your kitchen is anything like this unless you happen to have lots of hungry robots hanging around your house. See that machine in the middle of the room? It's the robot feeder. Two things you should know about robots. One, they're usually hungry. And two, their table manners are atrocious. Around now, I'd normally be hungry enough to eat a 57 Chevy, but Polly's behavior has made me lose my appetite. Hey, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, Spotly. Of course, if you do leave, you won't be able to find the mission clue I've hidden in here. If you want, you can click around the kitchen to check out some of the cool stuff in here. But to feed Mort and help save the world, click on the feeding machine. I have to warn you, though, watch your fingers and toes around hungry robots. Feeding machine. Here it is, Professor Sparks' robot feeding machine, patent pending. I've wandered in here for a midnight snack many times myself, but now it looks like we've got to feed Mort. Yes, Spotly, it's time for a little snack. After Mort calls for a snack, he'll tell you what toppings he wants on it, and exactly how much of each topping he wants. When you turn on the machine, Mort's robot bowl will move along the conveyor belt in front of me while the toppings move along the conveyor belt behind me. What you need to do is measure each of the toppings and drop exactly what Mort wants in his bowl. What's your pleasure, Mort? Let's see. Tonight I'm in the mood for a little bit of refreshing fruit salad. And could you please add a little gold bouillon, motor oil, some heavy springs, and refined sugar. Yum. Oh, that, that sounds, sounds delicious. good. Delicious, yeah. Now mm -hmm. click on the on-off switch in front of the feeding machine, and I'll crank this baby into gear. Dig in. Yum. 
Uh, cool. Alright. Gross. So, um, gold. There we go. I don't think you're finished yet. No, I'm not. Click on the switch to continue preparing Mort's meal. Okay. Next, we got some motor oil. need a cup of heavy springs because anything less than a cup is just utter garbage you need a cup a full cup that's how you cook and last but not least you need sugar the only normal sounding ingredient in this whole thing tell the other robots about your brilliant cooking. You did it! Man, Mort is one robust robot. Another fine meal, and another tip well deserved. <laughs> yes, I only wish it could be more. Stow that clue in your inventory for safekeeping. We've got a mission to complete. Alright, I'll take Bingo. that. Bingo! I've sensed a mission clue in the music hall. Musical. Was it this way? Where is that music called? You see that as we go up higher in the mountain, the professor's inventions get more secret and bizarre. Here we have the professor's delicate biosphere. <clears throat> and over there, we have the professor's shrink matic an easy way to shed a few robot pounds. That tram there will take us even further up into the mountain and to some of the professor's other inventions including his famous time machine. If you want to go back to the first floor, click on these stairs. Quiet now. I'm going to sense out this area. Great. I've got a strong reading in the shrinking machine room. Oh, I guess since we're here. This is Professor Spark's masterpiece. Well, one of them anyway. He calls it the... Uh, something or other. We call it the shrink o -matic. It can reduce anything or anyone to the size of a medium-large molecule with the help of my good friend, Egbert. Oh, yes. So if you want to know about any of my wonderful specimens, just pick up this analyzer and click on it. But please, don't hurt the specimens. <sighs> well, that'll come in handy when you go searching for the mission clue because I miniaturized it and hid it inside one of those specimens. Which specimen, Polly? Give us a hint. Okay, Potley, okay. Anything to stop your whining. This specimen has had no trouble making friends ever since it came out of its shell. Actually, this specimen only resembles a creature that lives in a shell. So we have to figure out which specimen Polly is talking about. That's where Egbert will come in handy. Use his analyzer to get information on any of the specimens and to help you determine which is the right one. When you think you know the right specimen, hand the analyzer back to Egbert. You can then move the specimen over to the shrink o -matic. Once it's there, Egbert can shrink me to the size of a molecule 
Then I can dive into the specimen and find what we're looking for. Weird slug. A slug looks like a snake. Well, time to sh Happy trails. Oh my! Not that I don't enjoy being helpful, but I'd really like to get this over with as soon as possible. I won't last more than 10 rounds in here, so you have to work quick. Click on the mouse to launch me. Rally you! That's it! Take the clue and put it in your inventory. Then, on to complete this mission! There are no mission clues on this floor. Let's go to another floor. Hey, we're in luck! I'm sensing a mission clue in the music hall. This is Professor Spark's art gallery. It's sort of an art museum and an art studio combined. That odd-looking machine over there is his virtual collection, where the professor keeps a display of some of the most famous works of art in the world. You can also go into the painting gallery in the back to create your own masterpiece. Don't forget to bring your imagination. If you're going to visit the gallery, you let me know if you find any of Polly's things hidden in there. If I've told her once, I've told her a thousand times, don't mess up the collection. Of course, she doesn't listen to me. Why, once I found a Romanesque urn next to a Baroque. That's Mrs. Beasley. She's the resident art expert. Some say she's as old as some of the Greco-Roman statues in here. 
I heard that, you hotshot silicon chipsters. So smart and so fast and so what? I've got more sense in my vacuum tubes than a lot of you. Well, if we have any questions about the art, we'll be sure to ask you. I'm not picking up any indications that Polly's hidden any mission clues here. You think maybe we should move on? Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the music hall. This is the door to the professor's concert hall, which he usually keeps locked so none of the less musical robots around here pound too hard on the piano. But the door doesn't open with a key. Instead, it uses a password. Hey, Beethoven! Huh? Hello? Who's there? Oh, Bartley, it's just you. You should have called my name instead of just scuffling around out there. Uh, sure. Okay. Listen, Polly's up to no good again, and we're trying to stop her. We're having trouble with this lock. Can you help us? Now, Bartley, if I just gave you the answers, Polly would reboot me in a heartbeat. But if you're really having trouble figuring out one of the words, click on the button next to it, and I'll see what I can do. Good luck. Okay. What you must do is unscramble the letters on the left side of the door to create four words. Win! Great job! You're better at this than I am! Rain! Great job! You're better at this than I am! Heat! Terrific! We're almost in! Sleet! Well, you've got all the words. Now to unscramble the password. Easier said than done. That is correct. The password is weather. <laughs> in the door. Let's go. This is the Mountains Music Hall. This is where rehearsals are held by our award-winning all-robot chorus, headed by Maestro Trombot. Of course, thanks to Polly, half the members of the chorus are lost in time right now. Ah, oh, to hear their sweet, dulcet tones just one more time. Maestro? Hey, Maestro! Shh, Bartley. You'll misalign my perfect pitch sensors. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. There we go. Sorry, Maestro, but Polly's put us all in a bit of a jam, and the future of civilization is at stake. Mamma mia, if she would only practice her arias, she wouldn't have the time or the inclination to destroy the world. Music has such a civilizing influence, although her voice, uh, let's just say it's not music to my ears that maestro you just don't appreciate my instrument do -do 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 -do. well polly you do have a quality i've got scads and scads of quality but what notley here wants is the mission clue i hid here in order to get it though he'll have to play me a song not just any song though i want to hear this song and please play it right dingbot my delicate ears can't handle even one sour note. You mess up, and you get nothing. Nada. Zilch. Nuts. You know, if you like, you can play the organ with the top row of number keys on your keyboard. Click on the music tablet to play that tune. <laughs> She, uh, uh, it seems that you have your work cut out for you, dear Bartley. You see, the music is all mixed up. If you want to hear how it's supposed to sound, click on me and I'll play it for you. Then you should have little trouble rearranging those musical phrases until they're in the right order. Click on the button next to the phrase to hear the music start on it. 
Then, click on the phrase to move it to another slot. If you click on the play button, you can play the entire piece as it's arranged on the music tablet. You can even change the instrument it's played with by selecting one of the instruments on this panel. job. This song is called Yankee Doodle. In the old country, Italy, you know, a macaroni is a type of feather people used to wear in their hats. I bet you never knew that. mission clue in your inventory, then we can continue our mission. Okay, there aren't any mission clues on this floor. Let's go searching on another floor. There are no mission... Yes! We're at the very top of the mountain. Just knowing what's up here gives me chills. Still, I'd go anywhere and face any danger to save my fellow robots. Over there, we have the professor's observatory. Once, a while ago, he caught Polly spying on the neighbors with the telescope. Boy, did she get a nice long time out. In that room is a little obstacle course, sort of a robot boot camp. The professor uses it to test out his new robots. Of course, I passed with flying colors when I was tested, but sometimes he comes across a robot with a few bugs that need to be worked out. If you want to go back downstairs, just click on the tram. Oh, and over there, behind those forbidding stone doors, that's where the professor stores the time machine. There's no way to open it, though, until we have all of Polly's mission clues and, of course, enough invention points. Stand back now while I sense the place out. Huh. I'm getting a strong clue reading in the observatory. NASA has nothing over Professor Spark. Just take a look at this place. It's here that the professor conducts all his top secret astronomical experiments. Way ahead of his time, of course. Hey, did you know that the professor landed a rocket ship on the moon years before Neil Armstrong ever set foot on it? <laughs> Just kidding. I guess you could say that you can get a mission clue here, but it's not exactly in this room. In fact, it's not even in this solar system, because I used one of Daddy's rockets to ship it into deep space. Special delivery. You won't find it by just looking around the void. You'll have to figure out exactly where to look. How do we do that, Polly? Space is a big place. Well, just because I'm such a nice girl, I'll give you a teeny weeny hint. There you go. I just sent the hint flying off toward the new black hole Daddy recently discovered. If you really work fast, you might rescue the hint before it gets sucked up into another dimension. Then again, maybe you'll fail. Scary, huh? Don't worry, we might have a chance. Professor Spark recently launched a whole series of space probes into the black hole. I think we can use it to intercept Polly's radio transmission. Just click on the telescope and we'll get started. Is this cool or what? One minute we're in Professor Spark's observatory, and the next we're looking into space 
300,000 light years away at a humongous black hole. You see that? <laughs> that was Polly's radio transmission, and the radio wave circling inside the black hole is part of Polly's hint. Unless you blast it out of there, it's gonna get sucked into a different dimension. That's one of the best spark space probes. Don't worry, it's strong enough to resist the intense gravitational pull of the black hole, and it packs laser beams powerful enough to knock Polly's radio transmission to safety. You can actually spin the ship by using the arrow keys on your keyboard. To shoot the ship's laser beam, press the spacebar on your keyboard. Whenever you hit a radio transmission packet head on, you'll knock it one light year away from the center of the black hole. When you collect four radio packets, you've got Polly's entire hint, ready for unscrambling. This is the professor's alien transmission decoding device. It comes in handy when it comes to decoding transmissions from extraterrestrial beings. The catch is, he hasn't yet found any alien transmissions to decode. Still, we can use it to read Polly's hint. I guess you can call that an alien transmission. Here comes the radio transmission you intercepted from the grip of the black hole. <laughs> What a drag. Polly's hint is all scrambled. Great! You decoded one of the sentences. Uh, something's not right. We gotta fix this sentence. Great! You decoded one of the sentences. Not done yet. There's more to figure out. Out of that, but you managed to find a real sentence. Great! Great! You decoded the entire hint. I made the days longer than the nights. I made flowers grow tall and days grow warm. How did I do all these things? I brought spring to ancient people. Way to go! The hint is unscrambled. Now we just have to go to the star chart and figure out where in the universe she sent our clue. Click on the star chart over there and I'll help. This is the professor's star chart. It's really like a map that shows the locations of all the billions of stars that we can see from Earth. Of course, there are billions more we can't see. In the old days, people used to navigate by the stars. This map would have come in handy then. Move the pointer over any of the constellations to find out their names. If you want to know more about one of the constellations, just click on it. Way to go! You picked the right constellation, and now the ship is heading back here. We made contact! Hey, that was great! Click on the clue and drag it to the inventory so we can get on with saving the world. We've got everything we need. Take a deep breath and click on the time machine door back there. Wow. Huh, excuse me if I sound sort of odd, but I wasn't sure we'd make it to the time machine mission control. It's impressive, huh? This is Professor Spark's most important work to date. The time machine extraordinaire. The professor created it so he could witness the invention of anything you can think of. Just go back in time and observe. He would never meddle, not like Polly. When he finds out what she's been up to, I wouldn't be surprised if she's in for some serious time out. Now we need to figure out where we have to go in history to complete this mission. That odd-looking machine will help with that task. It's called the Wheel of Invention. And by using Polly's mission clues, we can figure out which inventor we need to find. The professor tried to ensure that not just anybody could use the time machine. You need to know something about history, science, art, 
A little bit of everything, really. So click on the wheel and let's get going. We finally made it! This is where we bring everything together and figure out how to find the robot that Polly sent back in time. This is the professor's wheel of invention. It's an obstacle to the time machine. You see, some of the robots kept wanting to travel back in time to taunt the early computers. But you can't have that. So the professor devised a little quiz that's too difficult for the robots. But hopefully it's not too difficult for you. Oh, brother. Polly's reprogrammed the wheel so it's no longer just a quiz. It's a quiz show! It seems the show's called Pollywood Squares. You're the first contestant. This is how you play. Answer three questions for each of the clues you collected. You'll find out what, when, where, and who. All the information you need to create a profile of your mission. Once the game begins, you gotta work fast and try to answer each question on the first try. That way you'll win the time key faster and win the most points. Ready, set, okay, let's begin. Just click the on button to start. Ladies and gentlemen, kids and robots of all ages, it's time to play Hollywood Squares with your telegenic host, me, Monty Monitor. Answer all the questions correctly, and you'll be sent back in time, all expenses paid, to rescue poor Cosmobot. Your first clue is a pork chop. The pork chop will show you what your mission is all about. I love pork chops, and I'm not the only one. Pork chops can be found in cuisines all around the world. Pork chops come from which farm animals? That's right. Pork chops come from pigs. So does ham and bacon. It's all pork and it comes from pigs. Pigs are the only animals besides humans whose skin can get what painful condition? You're right. Hey, <laughs> Pigs get sunburns just like people. Sunburns are caused by overexposure to the powerful rays of the sun. Our sun is actually a star. It's the center of a group of heavenly bodies known as what? You did it! Yay! Another word for sun is solar. That's why they call it the solar system. Uh-huh. So it seems that Polly sent Cosmobot back to the time in history when the solar system was discovered. But where was that? Your second clue is a postage stamp, and it will tell you where in the world your mission will take you. Postage stamps are a way to pay for sending letters and packages. Before postage stamps were invented, the person who received a letter had to pay for it, not the person who sent it. The postage stamp was first invented by an Englishman named Roland Gill. What country did the English inventor of the postage stamp come from? That's right, oh, jolly good. English people come from England, and England is part of the United Kingdom of Great Britain. Now, let's see how good you are at geography. Great Britain is located on which continent? Right, oh, Great Britain is in Europe, the second smallest continent on Earth. What country is located in the very center of the continent of Europe? Correct! Yes! Poland is a large country in the center of Europe. Polish people make delicious pork sausages and dance to a unique style of music called polka. Poland's also the place where the solar system was first discovered. Thanks, Monty. We now know that the solar system was discovered in Poland. What we don't know is when it was discovered and by whom. The third clue is a dollar bill. It will tell you when in history the solar system was discovered. If you had a million dollar bills, you'd be a millionaire. The first kid ever to earn a million dollars was a famous movie star named Shirley Temple. 
The dollar gets its name from a coin once used in a European country, known for its mountains, castles, beer, and frankfurters. Which country was that? Wunderbar! In Germany, the coin they call the dollar was made out of a precious metal. Precious metals are metals that are not commonly found on Earth. Which of the following metals is a precious metal? That's right! Silver is a valuable precious metal that is often used for making coins. Silver was first used to make the German dollar 500 years ago. Which is the earliest year you could have used a German dollar to buy a Frankfurter? That's right! In 1531, the silver coin called the dollar could have bought you plenty of German Frankfurters. 1531 also happens to be the year when the solar system was discovered. We're almost there. All we need to find out is the person in Poland who discovered the solar system in 1531. This is your fourth and final clue. The sundial will tell you who first discovered the solar system. A sundial tells the time as a shadow moves across a surface marked with the hours of the day. The Egyptians invented the sundial 5,000 years ago, and it was one of the earliest ways of measuring time. A sundial works due to the movement of what heavenly body? You are correct! <laughs> Even though the sun creates the shadow that moves across a sundial, it's really the earth that's moving, not the sun. While the earth spins, it also moves around the sun. What is the Earth's movement around the sun called? That's right! <laughs> the Earth revolves around the sun. It takes one year to make one revolution. Who discovered that the Earth revolves around the sun? Right you are! Copernicus was the Polish astronomer who discovered the solar system in 1531. Before his discovery, people thought that everything revolved around the Earth. Okie dokie, we got all the information we need. Now, on to the time machine. We've got to go to Poland in 1531 before Polly messes up Copernicus's discovery. We certainly don't want the Earth to revolve around Polly any more than it already does. Before we take this trip back in time, can I just tell you how amazing I think you are? That said, grab the time key and let's move out. Wow, I never thought I'd see the inside of this thing. Pretty cool, huh? The professor made it clear this time machine was off limits to anyone but him. But with Polly about to send the world out of control, I think the professor would understand. That looks like our window into the past. Look, all the information you found at the wheel is now neatly in place up there. I guess the time key did that. This lever looks important. Click on me if you think I should pull it. Maybe it'll start things up. Next stop, Poland, to visit the great scientist Copernicus. He's about to discover that the sun is the center of the solar system. There's Copernicus, on the brink of making his great discovery. But look, Polly has reprogrammed the Russian robot Cosmobot to paint her picture on the model of the sun. Yet, Cosmobot, yet! Thanks to Cosmobot, Copernicus has decided that the Earth revolves around Polly. And we thought she had a swelled head before. Hit the recall button! It's our only chance! Cosmobot's back home and the cosmos is back in order. Make sure your seat backs are in their upright locked positions while I take us home. Ah, oh, there's no place like home. Press the back button on the utility belt to leave the time machine. We need to put this robot to rest. This is where the professor stores all his time traveling robots. I call it the robot roost. Believe you me, these guys have been around the block a few times. The 
problem is, we have to get them all back from the different places and times that Polly sent them. Right now, though, it's one down and 24 to go. We gotta start somewhere. Just let me store this robot for safekeeping. A long rest is sorely needed. Polly sent plenty more back in time, so let's start another mission. Well, good for you, Snotly. You rescued another one of your little friends. How sweet. But there are more where that one came from. I just hope you can rescue them in time. Let's take a look at that transquizzer and select another mission. Click on the inventory. All right. We still got places to go and robots to rescue. Click on any of the buttons near the bottom of the transquizzer. During the ancient Olympic Games, all wars would come to a stop and a truce would be called for three months. That gave the soldiers enough time to travel to the Games, compete, and then return home to continue fighting. What did athletes at the ancient Olympics get for winning? A prize that would make anyone run faster and jump higher. A bouquet of flowers and a diamond tiara. Here I am, Miss Olympic Games. Yes, that's absolutely right, Polly. The winners at the first Olympics were treated like beauty queens. Oh, no. Polly's gone too far this time. If she gets her way, the strong and brave ancient Olympians will be treated like beauty queens. You can't run a marathon in high heels. Well, not very well, at least. Click on the inventory button to put away the transquizzer. What a spoil sport, Snootly. But if you want to try to ruin my fun, first you'll have to find four clues. A pigeon, a torch, two masks, and a piece of pottery. I sent Rhonda Robot back in time. She's the reigning robot beauty queen. Rhonda Robot. She's won the Miss Silicon Chip Contest three years running. Now that's talent. We better work extra hard to rescue Rhonda from Polly's wicked ways and save the Olympics while we're at it. Careful now, I'm going to sense around here. Huh. I'm getting a strong clue reading in the observatory. Here we go again. Polly's launched another one of the mission clues into space. Man your battle stations. So you and your friend really like the thrill of venturing to the brink of nothingness. I have no idea what's in store for us this time, but we have no choice. Click on the telescope. Look, Polly's radio transmission is in the gravitational pull of the black hole. We have to knock it loose if we want to get that hint. Polly's transmission is four radio packets big. Make sure you collect them all or we won't be able to do so. Great, we got another radio wave packet. Nice shooting. You got a radio packet. Nice shooting. You got a radio packet. That's it. Now it's time to decode Polly's message. Here comes Polly's message. Fresh. Not done yet. There's more to figure out. Oh, you make quick sense out of that messy sentence. Okay, now here's the next piece of Polly's clue. Oh, you make quick sense out of that messy sentence. Uh, something's not right. We gotta fix this. piece of Polly's clue. Great! You decoded the entire hint. Okay, you once Click on any of the constellations and this machine will tell you a little bit about them. Polly's clue should help you figure out the right constellation. If you think you know it, 
then click on the constellation again. Taurus is the... Hey, you're right on target. Here comes the spaceship. Hey, that was great. Nothing here. Let's check out another floor. Sensors on. I'm gonna run a sweep of this floor. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hit a mission clue in the shrinking machine room. Look, we're at the shrinkomatic again. Just let me know if you need any information about my darling specimens. There is a mission clue hidden inside one of the specimens, Dotley, and it's your mission to figure out which one. So, here's your hint. Every state has a state flower. See the flower on Egg Drop's head? That's the flower for the state of emergency. And there'll be an emergency if you don't find this, the plant that produces the state flower of Arizona. The state of emergency? <laughs> that was more humor, wasn't it? Sea lettuce, sea lettuce, dandelion, cactus, fern, kelp, sea pen, wheat, tulip. Tulips are popular. Toadstool, sunflower, the sun, moth, mold, sea lettuce. Sea lettuce sounds like it belongs in a salad, but you wouldn't want to eat fern. The small green leaves of ferns spread out from the center of the plant on triangle cactus. This hardy desert. Do you think that's... Here's Paul. Bon voyage, Botley. That's French, you know. Tis a far better thing, Arthur! You're pretty good at this, so let's get the show on the road. Way to go! You freed the clue that Polly hid. Now put it into your inventory so we can get back to saving life as we know it. I think we should go to another floor. <laughs> Keep still while I sense around for clues. Hey, we're in luck! I'm sensing a mission clue in the kitchen. Voila! Another mission clue is hidden in the painting gallery. Okay, you can look at some famous works of art in the virtual collection by clicking on that machine. Or you can click on the painting gallery in the back if you want to get creative. Just make sure you leave everything the way you find it. Not like Polly, always creating a mess.
Let's go to the painting gallery. I sense there's a mission clue there. No, no, Botley, there's no clue here. Just some old invention points. If you can figure out which work of art I'm thinking about. Would it be too much to ask you for a little hint, Polly? Quick, Snotly. White U.S. state is famous for its peaches. Peaches from Georgia are famous all around the world. And Georgia happens to be the first name of an artist whose portrait I love. Let's go. See that drum on the right side of the machine? That displays tiny pictures of all the works in the collection. If you click on any of the pictures, Mrs. Beasley will tell you a little bit about it and help you decide if it's the work you want to see. If the work you want isn't on the display, pull this lever to check out a different category. Mrs. Beasley, can you remind my friend about which of the professor's works of art we're looking for? You're looking for a portrait of an artist named Georgia. <laughs> When you look at this painting, ask yourself this. How did the artist make it clear that the subject of this portrait was a king? This full-length portrait is the mother of the man who painted it, James Whistler. This is a portrait of the artist Georgia. Over time, photographs have become the most popular way of capturing a person's portrait. This portrait is a photograph of one of America's most important artists. Georgia O'Keeffe, standing in front of one of her beautiful paintings. Did you notice the regal profile of her face? Georgia O'Keeffe moved to New Mexico and began painting mysterious images of the desert landscape around her. Hey, that was a lucky guess. And according to Polly's Book of Rules, which was written by yours truly, lucky guesses don't count. So there. Nope. You'll have to work a lot harder than that to win. Uh-oh. It's a puzzle Polly thinks only she's smart enough to finish. But I think you can do it, too. You just have to line up the tiles so that all their sides match. Click on any puzzle piece to lift it off the display. Then click on any other piece and they'll change places. All the pieces aren't right side up, though, so sometimes you'll have to rotate them. You can do that by hitting the rotate button right there at the bottom of the display. While you're playing, Mrs. Beasley will tell you stuff about what you're looking at. She knows everything there is to know about the works of art Polly used to create this puzzle. Oh, this is a beautiful puzzle filled with things made by Native Americans. Some of my favorite pieces are here. work. Now take the invention points. Terrific! Bingo! Well, the door's locked again. Time to figure out the combinations to those locks. Hurry, hurry, hurry! I'm growing weak with hunger. First lock, two more to go. All right, you got two locks, just one more. I 
Molly couldn't keep us out. We're in the kitchen again, and you know what that means. The robot buffet. It looks like Mort is mighty hungry. I guess it's time to put on our galoshes and start sho- Chow time, and Mort's ready to munch. So, what'll it be tonight, Monsieur Mort? Hmm. You know what sounds good? A sliver of mud pie. And could you please add delicious green slime, strawberries, refined sugar, and maple syrup? Well, bon appetit, I guess. Now click on the on-off switch in front of the feeding machine, and I'll crank this baby into gear. Enjoy! Thank you. I must tell the other robots about your brilliant cooking. You did it! Man, Mort is one robust robot. Another fine meal, and another tip well deserved. <laughs> yes, I only wish it could be more. Stow that clue in your inventory for safekeeping. Okay, all sensors indicate that Polly hid a mission clue in the painting gallery. Gotta go to the generator to power up. This place is dead power-wise. Uh-oh, we've run out of energy. We can't do anything else until we juice up the generator. Let's go to the basement. Go to the basement. electric generator. Pretty impressive, huh? Professor Spark invented it so that he could produce all the electricity he needs to run the gadgets here in the mountain. And believe me, this place needs a lot of juice. It basically runs with batteries, but these aren't like the batteries on your flashlight at home. When used in the correct combinations, these batteries pack a big enough wallop to kick this generator into gear. See the monitors on those tubes? Each one has a specific battery requirement, so that when magnified together, the batteries are equal to the value on the monitor. The trick is to pick the right combination of two batteries. When you get all the batteries in place, the generator will produce electricity. You have to think fast, though, and work your way through both rings to get the generator going because those batteries will run out of juice if you make them pull all the weight for too long.
Okay, now you do it. Put the correct batteries in place. One ring down, one more to go. Fantastic! You finished the second ring. Now hold on tight, because we're about to get a mega power surge. <laughs> Isn't that cool? That was some jolt. We've got 100% energy now, so let's go save the world. Hey, we're in luck. I'm sensing a... Feel like browsing through the virtual collection? Just click on the machine. Or go to the gallery in the back if you feel like creating your own look. Just make sure you leave everything the way you find it. Not like Paul, he always creating a mess. Let's go to the painting gallery. I sense there's a mission clue there. I didn't hide any clues in the collection, but if your friend really wants to browse through Daddy's art, there's some invention points to make... Hey, we're... This room looks like an ordinary painting gallery, but Polly's father created it so anyone can make their own art. Heidi ho Snotly. I hid one of the mission clues here, and if you want it, either you or your friend will have to paint me a pretty picture. Of course, I get to tell you exactly what to paint. And it better be good. I've always wanted a painting that showed something like this. A skull in the desert. I was walking through the desert and I saw a big cactus with three cow skulls on it. I wonder how they got there. Click on any of the empty frames to begin painting. So the deal here is that Polly wants us to illustrate her strange story. I don't have much of an artistic flair. It's just not in my programming. So it looks like it's up to you. Luckily, Professor Spark made it so anyone can paint like one of the great masters. To your left are all the tools you'll need, and at the bottom are lots of cool colors. If you need to be reminded of what Polly's demanding, click on the card on the lower left corner of the frame. Click on any of the tools or buttons if you want me to explain what they are. When you want to work... Good work! It seems you got the painting right. Grab the clue and put it in the inventory. We've got everything we need to complete this mission. We should go to the time machine to... See that glass dome? That's Professor Spark's biosphere. In it, he can grow anything he wants from any part of the world. It's kind of like a vegetable zoo. And to protect the biosphere from outside contamination, the professor has set up a remote control way of working inside it. See over there? Those are explorers the professor designed to fly into the biosphere. 
And on that monitor is where you can watch the Explorer as you maneuver it anywhere you want. Inside, there are five different environments to check out. A desert, a rainforest, a mountain range, a grassland, and even an ocean. Each one contains plants and animals you might find in those places. Oh, Muddly, over here! Daddy doesn't deserve all the credit. I planted some things in the biosphere, too. Sure, Polly. Whatever you say. Don't scoff. It just so happens that I recently planted some invention points inside the biosphere. I'm not going to tell you where, though. Oh, no. You'll have to find them on your own. Polly, the biosphere is huge. You're expecting us to find a needle in the haystack, so to speak. Relax, Nutley. I know Daddy didn't exactly overload you with smarts. I guess I can even the playing field and give you some hints along the way. And here's your first hint. Get one of those explorers launched. Even you should be able to understand that. Boy, someday. Well, let's launch one of these babies and see what Polly's got in store for us inside that biosphere. Click on the launch button on the console to send the explorer inside. Okay, now we can navigate the Explorer around the biosphere by watching it on this monitor. Click on the monitor for a closer look. Huh, this is weird. It seems like the Explorer is underground. I guess what we need to do is fly up into the biosphere. That should be right above us. To fly the Explorer, use the arrow keys on your keyboard. Press the up arrow to blast the Explorer forward, and press the left and right arrows to rotate it. Bender. Which house is made of dry mud? An igloo, a greenhouse, or an adobe hut? Everyone knows that. are easy, but then again, everything's easy for me. Which animal flies highest in the air? A grasshopper, a vulture, or a vampire bat? Haha, <laughs> too bad. This brain tickler is sure to leave you high and dry. What do you call a dry riverbed? A marsh, an arroyo, a waterfall? Big deal, you got one right. the wall trying to figure this one out. Which bird pecks a hole in the side of large plants and trees to build its nest? A hummingbird, a pelican, a woodpecker. Everyone knows that. You'll need a nap to get this question right. Which animal sleeps for a long time during the summer to avoid the heat? A ground squirrel, a mosquito, a brown bear. I knew you'd get that one. Here's a tough question that's bound to hold you back. What do you call an area with fresh water and plant life? An oasis, a sand dune, or an iceberg? Big deal, you got one right. Good job, we're above ground. The professor reproduced five different environments here. You have to find the one where Polly hid her clue. Press the space bar to launch a probe. It'll give you an eyewitness view of what's down there. 
Then match what you find with Polly's hints. When you think you figured out the right environment, land the explorer in the designated landing pad. Each environment has one. Barometer on. Animal eats only other animals. No plants. This is a carnivore. Climatron indicator reads only 10 inches of rainfall per year. The desert riverbed is dry. This is an arroyo. Arborizer initiated. A mountain tree whose leaves do not turn yellow and fall off during autumn. This is a blue spruce evergreen tree. With some smooth landing. Now we can open that box by clicking on the key on the console. That was nice work. We should go to the time machine to complete this mission. I hope you're ready for more adventure because we're ready to get into the time machine. Just click on the on button. Welcome once again to the game show where history's on TV and Polly's got the clicker. In this exciting episode, we'll search for lovely Rhonda Robot back in time. Your first clue is a cute pigeon, and it will lead you to what this mission is all about. Pigeons have invented a special way of drinking water. Most birds drink by scooping up water with their beaks. The pigeon uses its beak like a straw. It's the only bird in the world that actually sucks up water. Pigeons are in the same bird family as which other bird? Right! <laughs> in fact, pigeons and doves are two names for the same exact bird. Like some other birds, doves have a special symbolic meaning for people. The American bald eagle, for example, stands for freedom. The dove is the universal symbol of what? Good job! Ho -ho. For thousands of years, the dove has stood for peace. It is a symbol of international cooperation among countries choosing peace over war. What sports event is played to promote peace? Nope, the world's gold medal answer. The Olympics are played by people throughout the world to encourage peace. That's why doves are released at the opening ceremonies of the Olympics, because they symbolize peace. Ha, so Polly sent Rhonda Robot to the Olympics. We're headed for a medal, keep going. The next clue is a torch. The torch will light the way to where the Olympics were first played. Making fire was a huge step for mankind. 
Here was an awesome form of energy that was finally in our power. No wonder that fire has taken on so much meaning and importance for people. Even the Olympic Games open with a spectacular celebration of fire. How does the Olympic torch get into the Olympic Stadium? That's right! Ho ho! Runners carry the torch around the globe and into the Olympic Stadium where the Olympic flame is lit. The runners represent the countries competing in the Olympics. Runners from countries all over the world train to compete in the Olympics. Approximately how many countries compete in the modern Olympics? No, great! <laughs> About 120 countries participate in the Olympics, including the country hosting the games. The Olympic torch is always lit in which of those 120 countries? Nope, try again. Yes, ha <laughs> ha. The Olympic torch is always lit in Greece because the first Olympics were played in ancient Greece. The torch symbolizes the constant renewal of the Olympic spirit. Pack your bags. Looks like we have to go to Greece to find Ronda Robot at the Olympics. Two masks are your next clue. They will lead you to who invented the Olympics. These masks represent two types of plays invented for the theater. The laughing mask represents plays that are comedies. Comedies have funny jokes and happy endings. The mask with the sad face represents what kind of plays? That's right! Ho ho! Tragedies are plays with unhappy endings. If you were going to write a play, you'd have to decide whether you wanted to write a comedy, a tragedy, or a mixture of the two. If you wrote a tragedy for the theater, what would people call you? Yup, haha. <laughs> dramatists have been writing plays for a long time. The world's first dramatists wrote plays in honor of a god called Dionysus. Who were the world's first dramatists? Great job! Ho <laughs> ho! The ancient Greeks invented drama as we know it today. For the Greeks, drama was a religious festival. The ancient Greeks had another religious festival. They called it the Olympics. Perfect. Now we know who invented the Olympics. Rhonda Robot, we are coming your way. All right. The final clue is pottery. And it will tell you when the Olympics were first held. Heating clay dug from the ground transforms gooey wet mud into hard waterproof long-lasting pottery. People in the Middle East made the first pots and plates out of pottery 9,000 years ago. What's another name for pottery in general? That's right! Ho ho! Many ancient pots and plates have been found because ceramics are hard and last a long time. Scholars dig up ancient ceramics to find clues about ancient life. What do you call the study of ancient ceramics and other objects? That's right. Archaeologists study ancient human societies by looking at the things they made. An archaeologist would most likely study a society from what year? That's right. Ho ho! And 776 B.C. was the date of the very first Olympic Games, which began as a religious festival. We know about the first Olympics thanks to archaeologists who dug up the ancient stadium in Olympia, Greece. Congratulations. Oh, and pack your toga. It looks like we're headed to the first... Steady, then click on me to go. Get set for a trip to ancient Greece. We've got front row seats for the very first Olympic Games. Yay! It's the world's first Olympic winner. But boo, 
It's Rhonda, the beauty queen robot. Look, the next event is the talent competition. There's no mistaking Polly for Miss Congeniality. That poor athlete isn't getting a laurel wreath. That's a diamond tiara and a bouquet of flowers. Hit the recall button before the evening wear competition begins. Much better. You've saved the Olympics from becoming a beauty pageant. Imagine running a marathon in high heels. Now hold on while I steer this contraption back. Phew, you made it back. Always a good sign. Press the back button on the utility belt to leave the time machine. We need to put this robot to rest. Hey, things are looking up here. We've added another robot to the roost. Can you say sweet dreams? Plotly, 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 what am I going to do with you? Are you trying to make me fail this test? I guess I'll have to make it a little tougher on you to get the next robot. No time to pat ourselves on the back. Select another question so we can save another robot. Click on the inventory to start a mission. There's plenty of cool things to do on this floor, but I'm... We can't dilly-dally with... I really would rather start a mission than play around. Those robots are depending on us. Well, guys, this concludes this brief little trip down memory lane with Jumpstart 3rd Grade. There are about 24 robots, and this would be probably a 24-hour video. Um, so <laughs> I'm just gonna wrap it up here, but I really do hope you enjoyed our trip through history. I thoroughly enjoyed it as well. This was such a great game. Please comment down below. Let me know. Did you ever get all of the robots when you played it as a kid? I'd be curious. Anyways, thank you for watching. Be sure to give the video a like. If you enjoyed it, comment down below and subscribe for more Jumpstart coming soon. Remember, you are special and loved. You're never alone. And you're always welcome to come hang out. Until next time, God bless, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, everyone.